It was uh, 45 years ago. Seems like yesterday. Uh, Mexico City, the Olympic Games. Um, and after the uh, running of the 200, uh, Tommy Smith and our next guest stand on the podium, winners of medals, um, with their heads bowed, fench, uh, uh, fists clenched um, in the air. As we move forward and get ready for Sochi, there are those who believe a protest of some kind, whether it be similar to that one or not, remains to be seen, uh, might be imminent. And it comes as a result of the position of um, uh, Mr. Putin and the uh, Russian government uh, regarding gay athletes and a warning that anybody who offers any kind of protest, demonstration, almost anything. Well, regarding gay people, LGBT people, everybody Correct. in Russia, the anti-gay laws, you know, which have kind of legitimized within Russia some horrific uh, abuse towards people from the LGBT community in Russia. So Anyway, anybody who de uh, offers any demonstration is subject to um, arrest. Whether they're serious or not, would they do this on, the, um, on a stage as big as the Olympics remains to be seen. But what might we expect? Uh, Olympic bronze medalist from 1968, Dr. John Carlos, uh, joins us on the phone. John, how are you? I'm real fine. Good of you to jo take time for us uh, today. As you hey, look, listen, before, before we get started, man, sure, let me pal. just give my uh, deepest condolences and sympathy for the people that lost their lives at the Naval Base in D.C. And I would hope all those individuals that have a Lord or God that they would say a prayer for their souls. Uh, well stated. Thank you very much. Um, on the on the front, on the uh, Sochi front, do you have any expectation that something will happen there or should happen there? Well, you know, let me just start by saying with Mr. Putin. Mr. Putin appears to be talking out of both sides of his mouth in the sense that he says that uh, he would lock up anyone uh, that outside of his... Uh, sexual preference would uh, violate his laws. And then on the other side of his mind, he makes a statement relative to what's happening in Syria uh, that we are all created equal. And I don't understand how he could say that relative to what he would do to people of that persuasion in, in his Olympic Games and then come out and say that we are created equal on the other side. So he's contradicting himself uh, immensely there. Relative to whether a demonstration took place, I think it takes courage, conviction, and wisdom to uh, make any type of demonstration, particularly a public demonstration. You know, we have uh, a door that we use in society, and one half of that door is a public door, and the other half is a private door. When you're in the Olympic Games, it's a public stage, and you have to be aware of your surroundings. You have to be aware of your convictions. And you have to be aware of your courage. It's not about the moment. It's about what's going to happen down the line after mm. this particular moment is gone, how society will view what you do. Now, John, the difference this time between this and 68, among the differences, is obviously that you, know, you and Tommy Smith were protesting the state of affairs back home in the United States, not in the host country. Um, the Olympics has gone to places before and will go to places again where people will object to uh, the way business is done or the values that are espoused by those countries. Um, there were lots of talk about human rights going into Beijing. Um, I'm sure there are things there, there, well, there are things in Canada that people could have objected to going into 2010. Um, who's, where does responsibility lie? If the Olympics, you know, the, again, the Olympics are going to take place in all kinds of different situations and all kinds of different political environments. Um, the IOC is in business with the host country. The sponsors are in business with the IOC. So whose responsibility is it? to make a statement in a situation like this? Well, let's look at it like what you just said. It's a business. It's a business that the International Olympic Committee makes money. The host country or nation might make some money. What does the individual athletes make? What do they have but the opportunity to make money, big money, for the Olympic Committee and for all of the sponsors? So I would think that it would be upon the Olympic Committee to see that everyone's freedom is upheld. If everyone's freedom was upheld within the, the symbol of the Olympic movement, these demonstrations would have to take place. 
I don't hear the Olympic Committee raising up to no large extent to tell Putin that he's subjugating people to uh, run from who they are in life, to be an athlete. It's wrong. But yet and still, the athletes shouldn't be just merely the one to have all the pressure to put them on, on themselves to say that what Mr. Putin is saying is wrong. I think some of the responsibility goes to the International Olympic Committee as well. Should the IOC have intervened, if that's even possible, um, even to the point of taking the Olympics away from Sochi after Mr. Putin made his uh, position known with regard to um, uh, gay athletes? I don't think they would have had to take the games away from Mr. Putin. I think they would have done it and sat Mr. Putin down and made Mr. Putin understand that they have a firm commitment to all of the athletes, regardless of what their uh, sexual preference is. You know, when you sit back and you look at sexuality, you're talking about someone gay. You know, uh, being someone gay doesn't say, well, it only happens to white people, it only happens to black people, it only happens to rich people or poor people or fat people or skinny people. It happens to all people. You can have someone of that persuasion in your family. Are you going to disown them? And that seems like what Mr. Putin is saying, that we will disown you because... We don't care for your preference. But what would happen if Mr. Putin had a son or if he had a daughter and, and that was a situation where he get them to subject them to the efforts that he's trying to put forth now? Well, it's, it's where it gets tricky, though, John, because, you know, if you roll back the clock where we are, um, it, you know, we wouldn't have seemed so uh, pure and right thinking on the same issue uh, 20 years ago, 25 years ago, 30 years ago. and. If you're well, and, the, and if you're the and if you're the Russians right now, you're saying, well, this is the way we do. This is our country. Our 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 parliament um, passed this law unanimously. These are our values. Who are you to tell us? You know, and and from our point of view, yeah, I I, under, I think everybody understands from where we're sitting. This seems absolutely, and it is absolutely black and white. Well, you know, when you when you say it's our country and our value, I think your country and your values come second to the fact that you chose to accept the Olympics to come into your to your deal. They didn't have a, a, a flag or a ceiling over the Olympics to say, well, we don't uh, we make sure that we don't have any gay or lesbians in, involved in the Olympic Games. They took the Olympic Games as a whole. Uh, gays and lesbians have been, been involved in the Olympics for, I'm sure, as long as the Olympics have been taking place. Undoubtedly. Yeah. So for him to come up and say this, like, it, it goes with the pie. You can't throw the apple out of the pie and just give him the crust. To try and put this into some sort of context, um, when you and Tommy were on your way to Mexico City, um, and there are many people who wouldn't know the whole story, at what point did you consciously decide at least to do something? I think I consciously decided to do something long before we got to Mexico. I consciously decided to do something when we were attempting to try and form an Olympic boycott. With you know, Perry Edwards, yeah. But when the boycott uh, fell through, it just became even more paramount in my mind and my heart that something needed to be done. A statement needed to be made. And I just thank God that I had the insight and, and, and the courage to, to say, first of all, if I choose not to go to the Olympic Games, then my convictions and my concerns will never be f faced. No one would have that on the table. Because I felt if someone was to go to the Olympic Games from America at that particular time, they could have won just as easily a place on the victory stand. And I don't believe that they would represent John Carlos that, uh, the way he felt that he needed to be represented at that time. John, what do you, what do you think about the, uh, the idea of boycotts? And I know, you know Harry Edwards, was, you know, there was a discussion about African-American athletes boycotting those games, American, uh, from the Ameri boycotting the American team in 68. But you know, we had a boycott in 76. We had one uh, in 84, 80, 84, 88. All four of those Olympics had a boycott of one sort or another. Right. I'm not sure well, what it accomplished other than costing hence, people a chance hence to compete. That time, hence 68, you know, I had a chance to look at it from both sides of the street. And, and I realized that, you know, when you do a boycott, it's like having a sanction against a country. The people are the ones that's oppressed by these sanctions. The people are the ones that will be oppressed by the fact that the boycott took place because they don't have an opportunity to see the greatest athletes in the world to show their wares. And at the same time, the athletes that have been trained all their lives to go to show their wares, they have to sacrifice. But yet and still, when the sacrifices are done, just based on a boycott, 
the like the games moves on, and there's nothing really said other than the fact that there was a boycott. They never discuss about whether anything was accomplished in the boycott. But if someone makes a statement, that statement is an everlasting statement. Be it whether I like it or I dislike it, the fact is that it was done. And in time, the sand rose off and people began to see the jewel that was there in that statement. Well, here we are 45 years later, as I said, off the top of the program. And we're, you know, we're thrilled to have you on this program. And the, and the point of reference is clear that um, I'm old enough to remember Mexico City. And even though there are many in the audience who would not, they are now, if they weren't previously, aware of what happened. And so, um, as you said, it, it, it will last, whatever statement is made, it will last uh, effectively for the, for in history for eternity. Time. For the duration of time. Sure Absolutely. it will. You know, and, and, and the sad thing is that we're still in a state of mind that we have to make demonstrations to, to try and bring clarity to society. We should be long beyond these things. And, and the reason why all these tragedies are taking place all over the world is because we don't have any room to sit down at the table and try and have some sort of understanding and dialogue to try and take care of these minor issues that turn into big problems. Uh, beautifully said. John, thank you very much for your time today. We greatly appreciate it. Can I ask a favor of you? Please. Could you send me one of the recordings on the Internet? We will be happy to do that. We'll pass that along to you. In fact, if you stay on the line one moment, my producer will pick up the phone and he'll, uh, he'll arrange to uh, send it to you. Certainly, and I send love to all my Canadian friends there. Thank you, Dr. John. Thank you. Dr. John Carlos, Olympic bronze medalist, 1968. He and Tommy Smith stood on the podium. For those who have not seen it, it's hard to imagine you would not. Look it up. Um, I want to say they had black gloves on. They did. And on their right hands, I believe, and uh, stood uh, with their heads bowed and their fists in the air in defiance of what they believed and thought and perceived was going on in their country, as Stephen said earlier. Yep. It was not about Mexico. It was about what was happening in the United States.